teachers of reddit what is the craziest thing that has happened in the teachers lounge not crazy but just a weird lunchtime story i was hired during my time student teaching to work as a long-term sub for a fellow science teacher going on maternity leave while working i would chat with the new science student teacher during lunch one day he and i are sitting having lunch and he pulls out some string cheese with an excited oh yeah he's feeling off pieces while we're talking when the bell suddenly rings his eyes go wide as he realizes he is only about a third of the way done with this innocent piece of his childhood he is enjoying he says i can't let the kids see me eating this they'll never let me live it down so he decides to finish it in fast forward not taking larger strips not biting it like some lame wannabe mozzarella stick but peeling off thin strands super quickly and shoving them into his mouth probably some of the quirkiest behavior i saw during my time there it tastes different if you bite it or take bigger pieces so he made the right choice i was a sub for a few months before i left for the navy back then i didn't actually need to do anything but take a two-day class to be a sub 50 bucks a day is pretty good you know anyway the craziest thing that happened in the teacher's lounge was a principal dressing down a teacher who was adamant about getting more desks in her classroom because half her students and two of her three classes didn't have one the principal told her that if she wanted the desks so bad she should consider stripping instead he was removed some time after turns out he was stealing from the school man you guys are going to be disappointed the teacher's lounge is pretty much only used for a, microwaving lunch b taking a dump c naps for substitutes best part of my student teaching practicum in the teacher's lounge during a free period there is this nice little old lady teacher marking papers while i make some coffee nice and quiet you know then all of a sudden she slams her pen on the table and yells you call that a freaking thesis statement also b b and b gossip about students and other teachers i became so disgusted over the behavior that i started hanging out in the janitor's room to which i found out became the new topic of gossip in the teacher's lounge whatever i was never out of supplies and my room was always spotlessly cleaned and that's what happens in the teacher's lounge when i was in high school i had a teacher who did that the way the other teachers talked about students and each other made her sick so she would go to a room where she could just be alone ended up being the boiler room unfortunately the one place they couldn't find her i work in a language school we eat sandwiches and talk about how terrible our students are occasionally we'll get into a heated argument about some usage versus actual grammar thing other times we'll play some sort of pass the time game a celebrities who should have been arch nemeses was one clint eastwood versus vivian westwood Kira knightley versus tom daly stephen merchant versus marvin hagler stuff like that teachers aren't exciting people during teacher time my math teacher two years ago was a guy who hated using calculators problems were hard but in the fact that you had to know your crap and didn't even take points off for arithmetical errors i like to make my problems simple and easy which is why i married my wife 10 stroke 10 would learn from again mr l was microwaving some leftover fish for his lunch mr d comes in and says it stinks in here who would microwave old stinky fish mr L waits for his fish to finish microwaving then takes it to an empty corner, but is too bitter after the encounter to enjoy a single bite of it. Mine was a bit similar except instead Mr. L responded by saying have a chew and then he jumped into his brobert. I was an elementary school teacher in Japan for several years. I was once asked by a co-worker what twerking was. The school's internet blocks YouTube and most video sites unless you have special permission reason to access it. Plus most twerking videos are a bit NSW. So video was out of the question. Even if this had been a professional inquiry, I was forced to explain via demonstration. I described it in broken Japanese as a jiggly butt dance and then proceeded to give my best approximation of what it might look like. I think I did an okay job. All the while verbally reiterating that this is usually done in tight pants or a thong in order to emphasize the jiggliness of the butt. One of my co-workers tried it out, but he was getting it all wrong. His twerking looked more like a weird hula dance, and I told him so. 
One of the other teachers was like it's more in the hips, right and actually did a decent job. Then a third teacher was like what are you guys doing and we then proceeded to re-explain what twerking was and a couple minutes later, me and four other teachers and suits were twerking in the teachers room with varying degrees of success. Not my proudest moment. We had a teacher fired for fricking another teacher, and she was the hot blonde teacher that you always hoped was doing stuff like that. Now she works at a Hallmark store, and no, I don't have pics, sorry. You can't fire a teacher for fricking another teacher, not in California anyway, we would be out of teachers. I used to work at a special ed, public school up in Harlem where most of the kids were extremely emotionally disturbed. One day, one of the kids threw a textbook out the window of his third floor classroom and it landed on a teacher's BMW that was parallel parked in front of the school, denting the hood. The teacher went ape crap, locked himself in the teacher's lounge and proceeded to throw break every piece of furniture in the room. When he finally came out, the chairs were in pieces, the tabletop was laying on the floor, and both the microwave and the refrigerator's doors were ripped off. Some of us helped to clean up, and sure enough, he had thrown the table legs and the door to the microwave out the window, damaging another teacher's car. Guy didn't get punished at all and was seen as a hero to the kids. Once I was loading our water cooler with a big bottle of water, it got away from me and fell, but not before hitting the table, breaking, and totally soaking everything and everyone in the room. Good times man. I had that happen before at an office I worked at, except it shattered on the floor. Honestly, it was pretty cool to Elsa's, even though it sucked to clean up. I am not a teacher, but thought this story was worth sharing. At my old high school, two guys brought some muffins to the front desk of the school. The people at the office put them in the teacher's lounge and a bunch of teachers and other staff members ate them. It turns out the muffins had THC in them and the guys did it as a senior prank. So that's some teacher's lounge hijinks. Pretty sure that's illegal. Years ago when I taught at community college one of our profs was caught fricking a student in the lounge. He had previously been caught masturbating in there and was warned. Turns out he had a tumor which was pressing on some important part of his brain related to inhibition. Once we learned of his diagnosis it explained a lot. Like his not being ashamed of being caught and all the bragging he used to do. He was back at work after it was removed. Thankfully it was benign. And back to his normal inconspicuous quiet self. I'm glad he got the help he needed, and that it didn't impact his career. Last year our principal moved a football table into our teacher's lounge. After our end of the year party when a bunch of us were helping clean up, I challenged our Reading coach's son to a match. I played like a champion and shut him out. He was 10 and he cried. So, there's that. Ro. A while ago one of my colleagues said a student touched her boob between classes. I told her to make really sure it was intentional before she reported it, because our hallways are packed and accidents happened. She ran over, grabbed my hand and slammed it onto her rather large breast. Does that feel like an accident to you? Science teachers tend to lurk in their supply closet instead of the lounge. It's much better in the closet, no drama, a whole pot of coffee to yourself, and some peace for a few minutes. I visited a science colleague in exactly the repose you describe. I had the distinct impression I was disturbing sacred solitude. I student taught at a middle school. There was more backstabbing, rumors, and bullying than among the students. It was uncomfortable and shameful, so I stopped having lunch there. Teacher's lounge? Ha 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 ha. Yeah, we don't have one of those. We do have a grungy, dirty basement storage area that leaks and has no windows. No chairs either. Our lunch break is called sister lunch. Because somehow all the male teachers and the female teachers all have separate lunches. Mostly we chat about our kids at home, not students, and what we are doing for the weekend. The only crazy thing was at my other school at the beginning of the year when we didn't have enough comfy chairs we would race each other down the hallway to lay claim. Then we stole a couch from the student lounge so now everyone is happy. So that's where the couch went to be. I saw another teacher push on the drink machine a little too rough when it ate her money. Also there is a female who keeps stinking up the men's bathroom every afternoon. I know it's a female because I'm the only male on my floor. We need to get this NSW'd quick. Come on, teachers, 
We know you're frisky bunch. Admit to the CORG parties and give us the details. During my internship, on THR first day I went into the teacher lunge for lunch. The teachers were talking about how drunk they got during the weekend. Two of them ended up losing their pants during the night and walked home took a cab home. At my current school they talked about how they passed out on the lawn during a block party. In fact that happened today. A social studies persons are rampant alcoholics. Also lots of discussions about certain students. To be fair this is often about why a student is THR way they are. You'd be surprised about how many students crave male attention because they don't have a dad or that they were abused as kids or whatever. Bottom line is we care about students. It's our job. We don't have to like them but we care about them all. We had just finished the first block period and most teachers were grabbing a quick cup of coffee before going back to class. We have a caffeinated pot and a decaffeinated pot. I think you see where this is going. Well, somebody accidentally replaced the decaffeinated beans with Crystal M. I normally drink decaffeinated, so I was quite wired for my next class which was a lab on dissecting frogs. That did not go where I thought it was gonna go. A few years ago I stayed late to finish high school report cards in the staff room. I was bored and needed something to do. A few other teachers came in with some of those pink missed phone call message pads. Oh, and an idea formed. A mildly gullible friend of mine, we'll call her Rochelle, at the high school was working with troubled girls who needed credits. The girls were in co-op courses throughout the city nursing homes, retirement residences, kitchens, etc. And Rochelle was frequently complaining how difficult it was to keep the girls from being fired from the co-op placements. It was very difficult for her to find them sustainable employment. So, instead of working on my report card comments that night, I looked up the number for an escort service called Beth's. I wrote a note for my friend to please call Beth about potential co-op placements, using my left hand so my friend wouldn't recognize my writing, on one of the missed call slips. Great prank. I then forgot all about it and finished those report cards. Two days later, I heard from a friend of a friend on staff that something hilarious had happened to Rochelle. Apparently, she had called Beth asking about co-op placements for the girls. A deep male voice had answered the phone saying this is Beth. According to the friend who relayed the story friend, Rochelle argued with Beth that no, she needed to speak to the real Beth about co-op placements. Rochelle also shared that she was calling from a high school and that it was important for the girls to have co-op experience and to get credits. I guess it was finally poor Beth who put two and two together and told Rochelle that this was a prank and she was calling an escort service. Apparently, Rochelle couldn't believe it. Seven years later, I have still never owned up to Rochelle that I did that. Hehe. He. This could have gone horribly wrong. Like you prostituting out high school girls wrong. I was a substitute teacher for many schools, grades kindergarten through high school. I was shocked at how much gossip and crap talking goes on in there. It's basically like high school. They talk crap about the kids, make fun of things that happened in class, and talk about how drunk they were over the weekend. It was like this in almost every school I subbed for. Least it was consistent. I used to work IT in a school and hung out in the staff room. It was actually boring as frick. Mainly bitching about unruly students or discussing family life. I started taking books in there and sitting in the corner reading instead of listening to them. I remember going into the teacher's lounge when I was in grade school and seeing a calendar for a pool they had going about when another teacher that was pregnant was going to have her baby. It's not as crazy as them playing poker or rolling dice in there, but it thought it was interesting how many teachers were participating in this pool, since gambling was not allowed at school. Not a teacher but in middle school I swear I saw a bed in the teacher's lounge. To this day I have no idea what it was for. Naps? Dude. We get tired too. If you go in during 6th period, you can find para pros coming in with empty bowls to go grocery shopping. It's really funny after the PTA put on a luncheon for the staff. Nothing will be left. No one says anything because everyone knows they live on $16k a year. Higher ed too. We often order more food for meetings than we need, to make sure staff takes leftovers. I taught in a school very near the Colorado border for a few years. After they legalized weed, one of my co-workers, 
A lady around the age of 60 said she was going to Pueblo to visit her son. But the next thing I knew, there were about 5 middle school teachers throwing wads of cash at this woman and asking her to bring them back the goods she delivered. I had been to Colorado the week before, so I was all set. I was just relishing the newfound information that a significant portion of my co-workers liked to get high. Source. Family of teachers and I am a youth worker in college for education. The most shocking thing about the teacher's lounge is that it is almost identical to every other break room on the planet. The teacher's conversations range from fricking, to drugs, to family, and work oriented topics. The kicker being that the person in the classroom often will take off the teacher's mask when they walk in. So sweet little maze. Sally who looks and acts like a sin and an angel outside is talking about hitching with a friend of a friend. You get a glimpse of it when you meet a teacher outside of the school out in the community. The kids I work with, 16-18, were shocked when they saw me at the grocery store with a 12 pack of beer. All I want right now is a man and a beer. High school English teacher's FB post, that alongside her sharing a guide to using a dong cake mold was some of the weirdest stuff I've seen on any one specific Facebook profile. Mostly, it's just gossip and lots of complaining. What weirds me out, though, is this bookshelf that's in there. It's kind of an informal lending library type of thing. Anyone can add a book and anyone can take a book. The majority of them are trashy romance novels. Some with titles that really make me wonder. When I was a senior in high school I used to go into the teacher's lounge on a regular basis for coffee. Every day I'd raise my hand to go to the bathroom and come back 5 minutes later with a cup of coffee. If asked why I was there I told them I was making a cup for the teacher. Back when I was in 5th grade I remember walking by the teacher's lounge and when the door opened, all the smoke came out because all the teacher would run in there to puff on their cigarettes. My wife used to be a paraprofessional before going back to school full time. She was very close with the first grade teacher. On the last day of school before Christmas break they were asked to clear out the lounge refrigerator. They just took a sharpie and dated everything as the first day back from break. No one questioned why all the food went bad on the same day. Teachers basically don't give a crap the day before vacations. Another time the second grade teacher, who everyone hated, was bitching about kids liking shows like Jeek and the Neverland Pirates. Basically she was mad pirates were being glorified even though they were thieves and murderers. The principal heard this and made sure to make national talk like a pirate day a big costume day in school because he hated her back talk in staff meetings. Two of my fellow teachers and I were discussing the two girls, one cup video. I had never even heard of it before, but the other two people had. They just hadn't seen it. One had only seen reaction videos of people watching the video, and he said based on that, it had to be some crazy crap. So we watched the video, we were all in our 20s, while regular conversation happened around us. People ate their lunch, graded papers, etc. We had a really cool principal back then, he used to break rules and do things like smoke cigarettes in his office all the time, so we got away with a lot of stuff back then. When he retired, the new principal put blocks and filters on all the computers in the school, not just the ones for the students. When I was working at school, I only went to the staff room like, twice, but the first time I was in there, another guy who was working there, we were both on experience, and paid, we you want to call it, it went a little bit like this, other, so, kid who was also in our year group got put in a coma the other day, but me, well, it doesn't really affect me, hopefully he came out of it but he's a bit of a dong, like, other, yeah, true, I'm not bothered that much either, hopefully he'll get out of it though, it can't be nice, every other person in there mumbles in agreement. We use coat hangers to get snacks out of the vending machine. I have flirted with the vending machine guy to score snacks for free. No shame. Funniest saddest moment. Several of us were in the lounge eating lunch, inhaling lunch, 20 minute shift. It was Friday, aka jeans day. We had a science teacher who had spent a few years teaching at an American school in the Republic of Niger and was wearing a Niger football, soccer, jersey, the dumb butt, jock, former pay teacher, semi pro football. Football. Player. Principal. Yes. I am generalizing. Judging. ETC. 
comes in and says, in all seriousness, Mr. S, you really need to change your shirt. That is not appropriate Mr. S replied, because it says Niger, a county in Africa the dumb butt just grunted and walked out. We then lost it. Many teachers have left that school because of that principle, but that's another story. One of my teachers in art school told us about the time she was very, very pregnant. She brought a water balloon into the teacher's lounge and convinced the room her water had just broken. She said people were shocked and horrified. I love that teacher. I attended UT Austin where my student teacher mentor insisted that I never hang out in the teacher's lounge. After returning to UT for our once a week meetings, he kept checking to make sure that I didn't hang out in the lounge. He reiterated that it was a cesspool of gossip, backstabbing, etc. After graduation I taught advanced high school science classes for 15 years at two different suburban school districts. I would try visiting the teacher's lounge in occasion for lunch. I learned that my mentor was totally right. The most negative of the teachers would eat in there. Misery loves company. It was a total complain and be session constantly. The teachers that most students hope they don't get assigned to frequent the teachers lounge. Most of the cool teachers. The ones who still like teaching and were enthusiastic about their students and subjects. Either ate alone in their rooms or got together in little groups in each other's rooms. I could go on and on with stories. But you get the idea. Find a few positive minded teachers and hang with them at lunch. You'll have a much better afternoon. P.S. You do have to venture to the lounge or workroom if you want a soda or snack. Teacher's lounge is the best part of the day. It's free therapy sessions with my colleagues. I love where I work. My colleagues are hilarious and they keep me grounded. Yes, we do talk about students but it's usually telling about an awesome kid or asking advice about a troubled student. Mostly it's sharing our own life stories with each other, be it juggling work and kids or farts and hot flashes. Of course there is complaining but that's with every job. I was diagnosed with cancer last year and missed half the year. Those teachers supported me emotionally and financially. They still cook for me, take me to chemo, and even built me a nursery for my newborn. I cry sometimes because I miss my teacher lounge buddies so much. I'm not a teacher but once in elementary school my dad was running late for a PTA meeting. Past the teacher's lounge, smelled smoke. Instincts kicked and so he kicked down the teacher's lounge door to find the microwave was engulfed in flames and put out the fire. Turns out my teacher was making Orville popcorn and accidentally set the microwave for 50, 00, 00 instead of 5 o'clock mins and then forgot about it. I work in a very dysfunctional program, where a two or three strong personalities keep everyone on edge and really defensive. Some of the ego trips these people go on is ridiculous. And episodes of absolute cuntiness are astounding. When I first started working there, we had a brainstorming session of what topics we could cover for a new class. This is an ESL department. In my ignorance, I thought that this was an environment where we could openly share ideas and discuss her, without ridicule. So I open my mouth and make an innocuous suggestion, only to get basically called an idiot and undermined by one of those teachers. I didn't like using this word often. But she's such a freaking C. My wife and I bought a house about 6 months ago. She was beside herself that I could buy our house. Like I didn't deserve it or something. Not to my face. But after I had left. Monty just be at a house. He's been woroking here for 2 years. John. How long have you worked here 10 years? Do you have a house? I have savings. B. My wife has a good job. After this incident. I really wanted to talk to her about my house and talk about how big it is, it iced, all the cool features and things it has, really go overboard just to pee her off. A group of teachers would hold bible study during their lunch period and it was so annoying. I knew and had worked with a few of them and they were terrible people and had train wreck lives, not very christian. I stayed home to watch the first moon landing. It was a normal school day, Adelaide, Australia BTW, I was 8 at the time, wandered into school around lunchtime I think, it seemed deserted, heard noise from the teacher's lounge, opened the door, I got about a 2 second eyeball in the room before a teacher came out, told me go home, no school today, in that 2 seconds, I saw streamers, champagne, 
Lots of very drunk teachers. A women teacher straddling a make teacher. Teachers passed out in the floor. It made me happy someone else cared. My mum thought it was cool and my little brother just wanted to watch wacky races. I thought I was a nerd alone. We would usually go in there to complain about students. The director of the school kept bottles of liquor in the freezer. We would occasionally take shots together during rough days. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.